spoken about this concern about the, the co-evaluation and the response from multiple services to 911 calls. As best you can, can you just explain what happens, you know, in a situation like Councillor Farrell mentioned, there's a domestic and you need more than one service. What will happen under this provincial system? So right now, when you phone 911, it goes to the Calgary 911 Center and you say, someone's been stabbed. And at that point, you end up with the person who can dispatch ambulance and life-saving fire and the person who can dispatch police on the call with you together. And sort of everyone gets dispatched at once. What will happen after January 26th is when you say someone's been stabbed, the person who's answering the phone needs to quickly determine is this an active crime scene or a medical emergency primarily? Of course, it's both of those things. So if they determine it's an active crime scene, then it will go to police dispatch. Police will go through everything, send police officers, and then and only then will they go to AHS to build their own call to send paramedics. And at the end of that, it will come back to fire to send firefighters. So, you know, the person who's been stabbed is going to be waiting significantly longer for what could be life-saving medical care, and I just don't think that's acceptable. At that initial intake of the call, the Calgary 911 uh, call taker, can they just say, it, you know, it's a stabbing, um, police, you may want to go look at this as well, like without the call bouncing around or people calling back? The problem is that it's not quite that simple because for police to be dispatched, they need to know exactly what's going on. So they have to ask a bunch of questions around who's the victim, who's the perpetrator, is it still a risky situation to keep the officers safe? Similarly, if you've ever had to call 911 for a medical emergency, they don't just send an ambulance. They actually have to ask what's the situation, what's going on, they can give you life-saving advice over the phone about covering the wound or applying pressure, that sort of thing. And the problem here is instead of doing that simultaneously, you'll end up doing it sequentially, uh, which is not a great outcome. How did this issue come up now? Most of the discussion that we've been having about 911 is concerned about uh, the connections between fire and EMS and having fire medics be off scene. So how did you only realize that the police was possibly an issue as well? AHS has not been great about communicating. It since seems to be spending their communications time picking fights with the other mayors on social media instead of communicating with the people who are actually doing the work. So the way I understand it is that they kept saying, yes, we have a plan, yes, we have a plan, yes, we have a plan, and then just last week said, mm, actually, we don't have a plan. And even worse, we don't have a plan to make a plan. Have you brought this up to the Premier directly? I know that I have indeed. letters sent, but you've had meetings with him as well. Yeah, well, this is late breaking. And so I have used all the channels I have to communicate this directly to the Premier and to the Health Minister. The Premier has not responded directly on this, and the Health Minister has said, I'll look into it, but that was days ago. Well, it was mentioned by, by Richard Hines, this has been worked on the transition to four months of work. The city and the AHS teams have been talking. How does it get to the last couple of weeks before something of this magnitude isn't talked about? because AHS, in my opinion, has not been taking it seriously enough. Uh, we've gotten a lot of, yeah, 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 it's under control, and it's not. Do you have any understanding of how this works in you know, the rest of the province, where 60% of the population is now covered by Yeah, it doesn't work as well. The Calgary system, as you heard from Deputy Chief Topic today, and we've heard from police agencies across the province, is that the Calgary system is what everyone else should aspire to. And instead, what we're getting is everyone else being pulled back the lowest common denominator. Is that perhaps a challenge? Is that nobody is, or is that other cities around the province aren't familiar with the gold standard? That has been a challenge, yes. Uh, as I talk to other mayors, they kind of know the system doesn't work. And certainly some of them, like in Foothills County or in Airdrie, are very, very vocal about how the system doesn't work. But for many of them, they've never had a system that works better. And so for them, they kind of say, well, this is how it's always been. Um, and we have the opportunity at a very low cost to make the system work much better, and I don't understand why we wouldn't take it. I had a conversation with the AHS communicator yesterday, and I was told that for Delta and Echo medical calls, fire departments are automatically dispatched, but there's no explanation of how that happens. Do you understand that answer? 
Uh, I do understand what they're saying, that I don't know that they've written that down, maybe they have, but the idea is that delta and echo calls are the most um, life-threatening calls. And so right now what happens is literally as soon as you get to 911 and it's determined that it's a delta or echo call, the fire truck's on its way. And meanwhile, we're working to develop the call to provide life-saving instructions and get the ambulance out. That will flip around in the new system, which is that the ambulance call will be built first, and then when that's over, they will transfer that information, but not the caller, to the fire department. And as we know, fire gets there first in about 50% of the cases, and this will certainly mean that fire will be delayed. It may not mean ambulance is delayed, but it will mean fire is delayed. So are we literally getting to the point, do you think, that the city will have to say to people, if you need more than one emergency service, you're going to have to call 911 twice? I don't think so. Um, certainly not with fire, because at least the computer systems link. It just means it'll be delayed. If you call back, it'll equally be delayed. Um, for police, there is a scenario where if you say, I'm bleeding badly, and as the ambulance dispatcher determines you're bleeding badly because you're being stabbed, that's the point where it doesn't really, it's not clear how that goes to law enforcement because there's no computerized system where you can send that call. So one of two things happens. Either you make the person hang up and call 911 again and tell their story to the police, or the operator calls 911 themselves and it's a bit broken telephone to tell the police what's going on. Could there not be a technological fix of having the computer or the, the EMS and police CAD systems talk to each other? That is not currently available. It's turned out that it is it has been very difficult over the years. But the reason the other thing is that the questions that you ask are different. Because the questions the police dispatcher asks is to determine the safety of the people and the safety of the officers. The questions a medical dispatcher asks are about saving your life. And so it's not just a matter of transferring the data with the address in it. You need to know more than that. I know I asked this the other day, but you know, the system's already in place at Edmonton. Don't they already have that is that they already talked about and gone through this with trying to contact police being on different CAD systems like that? Well they do and in sixty percent of the province in fact, but as I've said, um, People say that the system we have here in Calgary is far better. And so why would we go and revert to a system that's not as good? Can I ask you a couple of questions on snow and ice removal? Um, sure. Just on the motion that was introduced today, you, I know you guys will be talking about it next week, but do you think that there are extra hoops to jump through, so to speak, for the roads department to react in these extreme weather events? And the second part is, it's been three weeks now to the day since that huge dump of snow in Calgary. Do you think the snow and ice response has been adequate three weeks later? Yeah, so question one is, no, there's not really any bureaucratic hoops. What the notice of motion is referring to is declaring a snow emergency, which is like declaring a state of local emergency. It means closing stores. Uh, it means restricting people's travel. And we've never had to do that in the 10 years that I've been here. And that's interesting because that's not the same in other winter cities. I often get told, oh, look at what they do in Halifax or Montreal. But those are places where they often have snow days where everything's just shut down. And I can't think of the last time there was a snow day uh, here. So I don't think that's the issue. I think what the issue is, is, you know, it's always good to relook at stuff. So when I was first elected, uh, we increased the snow removal budget by about a third. We started doing snow clearing uh, on residential roads, which was never done before ever, um, as part of the end of our seven day plan. And we started to do some snow removal. Now, as things have switched around, there are different technologies out there, there are different ways to partner with private contractors, which we already do. The problem is that the private contractors are also busy on big snow days doing their other work. Um, but I'm always happy to look at that again and see if we can do a better job on all of that. As for this uh, snow dump, I think what people may not realize is that normally, with that amount of snow, we would call for a parking ban on snow routes. Because the snowfall happened on December the 22nd, when we were in the midst of a provincially mandated lockdown, we very deliberately chose not to do that, even though we normally would have, because we didn't want to add more stress to people's lives when they're stuck at home. And that did in fact slow down our response a little bit. 
Um, but that was a that was a choice over the Christmas break uh, in order to do that. I know that some of the residential streets are still pretty tough, but I do know that our crews have done a really good job on the priority one, priority two, priority three roads, including in some cases snow removal, as in truck the snow away um, on streets that the windrows were impossible to navigate, which is not something we normally do. And so um, it can always be better, yes, uh, but ultimately part of that was a very deliberate decision to try and make people's Christmases a bit easier. I have a green light question for you, sir. I'm not aware of that project. <laughs> um, you know, through many hours of discussion, I mean, one of the reasons to have the green light underground downtown was that we didn't have to give up another downtown street to the sea train. Um, there's a rendering on the city's website right now that has the public access to a, an underground station being in the middle of 2nd Street, southwest. Is that actually an option that's on the table, or is it just conceptual? I'm not aware of that particular rendering. Certainly one of the options has always been that you lose a little bit of traffic on a, a pretty quiet walk of 2nd Street uh, just south of the river. But we are also working with the landowners on either side, both of whom are looking at a massive redevelopment to actually integrate the station into the building so that that would not be required. Um, but that, all of that design work continues now. That's, that's you're speaking of the Eau Claire station. Yes. Um, the one, this, this rendering is what, the 7th Avenue station. Really? Yeah. Where so, exactly would this support all be? Uh, well, the south end access would be at 7th Avenue and 2nd Street. That doesn't make any sense. So in the middle of the street, there would be that, you know, the, yellow, the escalator access to get down to the station. I'll need to focus, I'll need to look at that again, because that, that is not something I heard of. But your hope would be that any of the underground stations, that the public access would be on the side of the road. Nearby buildings, right? Yeah. Or in the buildings, or, exactly. Or in the buildings, exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody.